Hello, this is Andrea for the Learning Bear Podcast, your resource for wild professional development. Today we're doing something a little bit different, and we're going to be talking about this book, Vitamin N, written by Richard Louvre. You probably remember him if you've read his book um, called The Last Child in the Woods. He also has a follow-up to that, which is called The Nature Principle. This book is quite impressive. Um, it's not what I expected at all, and I really like that. <laughs> so, for starters, it's not a book book, okay? As you can see, there's lots of bullet points, pictures, and so forth. It's not like his last book, or the last book, I should say, that I read of his, which was The Last Child in the Woods. Vitamin N is all about learning to be a nature person, essentially. He gives you all these different activities and ways to connect in your uh, own personal environment, uh, regardless of the weather, uh, regardless of the temperature, regardless if you're new or old hat at it, uh, if you're being with kids or without kids, all of that, it's in this book. I'm obviously not gonna read you or anything, this book, but I wanna talk to you about some of the things that I saw when I was reading it and uh, talk about those things. So I do wanna make a little bit of a note here. One of the things that he recommends, small projects for small hands, is to create a sand castle or a village and sand people and then crown yourself naturally. So yes, this is fun. Take your kids out, have a great time on the beach or whatever. Um, and if you do go to the beach, I just want to make one little plea for help. Please, if you make a sand castle, a moat, moat, whatever, if you dig a big hole, please fill it in. Because although it doesn't say here in this book, sea turtles get trapped in those holes and those sand castles and uh, they die. So please, if you do do this, uh, fill in your holes and demolish those castles. That's half the fun anyway. Another really fun thing that he talks about is making your own paint, which sounds really messy, but it would be kind of like a round two recipe. You go out foraging with your kids, you find something cool, and then you're like, hey, you know what? We can make paint out of this. So he refers to education.com a lot uh, in this book and for a variety of different reasons. And here he is again, talking about education.com and um, learning how to make paint from walnut shells, which is pretty cool. The next one, you can see I dog-eared all of my pages, which I will undog ear I promise. Uh, this one talks about, and I will zoom in, but there's all this stuff here. Um, he talks about uh, letting your lawn go native. Uh, I've recently talked about this on my channel, and my husband's talked about it on his channel, uh, USMC Sachs Oki. Uh, letting your lawn go native, put in nat native uh, plants, flowers, and so forth, really, really helps your pollinators. And you know what? If you let it go crazy, you don't have to mow it. So when it's a million degrees outside, you can just sit inside and think, I'm doing an awesome thing right now. And that is amazing. Another really cool activity he talks about here is turning your yard, garden, roof, or window box into a butterfly rest stop. I've talked about this too. This is um, kind of like the roof is growing from the Landscape uh, Architecture Society people. Same sort of idea. He talks about how you can turn that into a space, a green space that you and your kids can monitor all year long. This little blurb here is a personal story from somebody else. It's not from Richard Louvre, but it's how Jalapeno changed this guy's life. As you can see from the uh, title there, he was struggling, having a rough go of it, and he decided, well, no, it was decided for him. Either he was gonna flunk the class or he was gonna uh, have to join the Eco Club. And from that, he learned how to grow plants and, um, you know, he kind of picked up where his mom had left off. His mom had done that. They'd grown herbs for when they were sick and so forth. And he took that a step further. And that was really cool. Um, moving on. Nat nurturing natural resilience. I like this quote and that's why I'm sharing it with you. 
it says, if I can get it in focus for you, children still long to experience freedom of the day. I am convinced that the inclination survives even if they aren't given license to follow it. They want to confront the world on their own terms. They want to discover what wild means and to find it for themselves. So I think about my son in this situation. Now he's barely a year old, okay? So right now I'm not letting him wander around outside all the time, partially because it's a million degrees outside, uh, partially because our, our yard is infested with uh, fire ants and I don't need my kids swelling up from fire ant bites. But when the time comes and we don't live here anymore um, in a pit of fire ants, my kid will be outside. And yet still when he's inside, I just close off all the doors so he can't go anywhere. He's, he's basically stuck in the one room, but I let him explore to his heart's content. If he wants to play in the shoes, he plays in the shoes. If he wants to crawl all over a car seat, then I let him. Um, he's building those skills already, even though we're not outside. And when we do go outside, he'll be much better for it because he's doing that now. So moving on. Now this little excerpt here, Parks are for People Who Look Like Me, is great, but that's not really what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on becoming a citizen naturalist. This is something I talk about a lot, uh, both publicly and privately. This is an opportunity for you to volunteer with your local parks. You can help uh, remove invasive species. You can join a master naturalist uh, community. You can learn about bugs, about plants, about birds, all of it. It is so much fun. It is so worthwhile. I highly recommend it. Um, this book gives you the basic information about how to do all those things. And I'm telling you, the people you meet, it's so much fun. So much fun. And you get more cool books like this rec recommended to you. So, uh, moving on. This is another good excerpt. Is there a recommended dosage of vitamin N? I'm not covering that though. Um, this uh, nature is has been well documented about reducing stress um, and all these other health benefits. And I just kind of want to remind people of that. So if you're stressed out, go outside. <laughs> uh, it's also really good for reducing ADHD symptoms. It's, uh, if you're sick, have a view of being outside of nature. Seek out positive places with negative ions. Create a therapeutic landscape, like with flowers or trees or whatever floats your boat, whatever makes you relax. And um, support any local healthcare providers who promote uh, nature time, which could be any any number of things. Could be pediatricians, could be um, more uh, alternative medicines, any number of things. Um, and I just want to point this out because uh, we're a family with veterans, um, nature programs offer peace and healing to veterans. So yet another way that being outside helps you. And then he goes on about all these different nature therapies you can go through. Um, they're certainly worthwhile, but I can't talk about everything in this book because I don't have that kind of time. The next, this one's an experiment and I'm going to use this as soon as I possibly can. It's learning how plants breathe. Never heard of this, I'm pretty excited about it. Place a Ziploc bag over a leafy part of a plant and zip it as far close as possible. Come back later and see the moisture. That's pretty amazing and I hope I can do that soon. <laughs> Again, he references education.com, so check that out if you want these sort of activities. Another activity is growing a radish in a balloon. Can we talk about that for a second? Uh, that's amazing and um, I've been writing a curriculum and I'm definitely gonna change it to this. Uh, the next thing is becoming a weather detective and if you haven't read it yet or you haven't uh, listened to my review, The Weather Detective uh, by Peter Volbin is amazing and you should check it out. And the things that he mentioned, that Louv mentions, um, are all in this book. It's amazing and it's short, so check it out. Moving on, creating a support system for a nature-based education. This means working with your teachers, working with other parents, creating your own clubs, basically taking initiative to get not just your kids outside, but all kids outside and their parents. Um, moving on, uh, I like this section here. Uh, 
because it talks about careers and jobs that you can have in these in a nature-based uh, system. So biophilic homes and workplaces is one. Um, nature Smart Residential Builder Specialist in Nature Smart Employee Benefits. So if you're an HR person, you could take on that. Nature Smart Yard, which is kind of what we were talking about. Urban Wildscaper. There's more that I won't go into. So really awesome. And along with that, there's this article, small little thing here about a woman finding her calling in a canyon. And I didn't find my calling in a canyon, but I found it in a classroom and it, I really wasn't expecting to and it just kind of hit me upside the head, <laughs> to say the least. And I just sort of knew from then on that's what I wanted to do. Uh, you never, as long as you're always open-minded, you never really know uh, where life's going to take you. And this is one of those instances and it was pretty cool. So if you're in a bad job, start looking uh, for opportunities in other areas. Um, moving on. Uh, there's some cool stuff about working with your libraries, which is always cool. There's um, stuff about working with uh, faith-based organizations, whatever your faith may be, um, or if you don't have any. And then there's some other stuff too, and then all of his references here and stuff are at the back. So, Vitamin N. Really cool book. Wasn't what I was expecting. Way better than I was expecting. Uh, I really need to, I owe it to Mr. Louf to go back and read his original book that I read, um, Last Child in the Woods, Saving Our Children from Nature Deficit Disorder. I really should go back and read it. I remember not liking it, but I wasn't as passionate about it as I am now, so that's probably the difference. Um, you should check this out if you can. Uh, take what you want from it, and don't worry about the rest of it. You don't have to follow everything in this book by any means. So that's it for me today. Have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.